Uh, I want to thank uh, Vice Chairman Schweikert for allowing me to go first this morning. I'm going to have to hop over to appropriations here in just a few minutes. Uh, but I want to start with, uh, with President Nygren. You know, Congress established the Special Diabetes Program for Indians in 1997 in response to the growing prevalence of, of the disease among American Indian and Alaska Native populations. It provides funding for diabetes prevention and treatment services to over 300 Indian health programs across the nation. And I think the strength of SDPI is that it provides grantees with a great deal of flexibility, and we've heard a little bit of, about that uh, on the Navajo Nation today, to design and implement interventions that are culturally competent and directly meet the needs of those individual communities. Uh, President Nygren, how have you been able to tailor health programs on the nation, and do you think that, that this, this kind of approach can be successful at a wider scale in non-Native communities as well? Good morning. Good morning, Senator Heinrich. Thank you so much for that question. One of the things I want to mention, too, is I, I recently went to an event out in uh, Crystal, New Mexico, mm -hmm. which is uh, south of, north of Winter Rock, Arizona, and there was a couple hundred uh, walkers. So people came out to walk either half a mile, one mile, two miles, or three miles, and they were provided with bananas, good foods to eat, and education. So we had the whole Navajo Department of Health was out there. So it was a very uh, community approach. This is an opportunity for people to come out. Not only one of the things that people take a lot of pride in, too, is the T-shirts the that are being provided at those events. And a lot of those T-shirts encompass culture, encompass health. And this is something that they like to wear out in the community. And, just, and it also brings them a lot of sense of pride. This might be their first T-shirt that that's brand new for the year, and they look forward to these events. So I think that the custom approach to the community is a very critical approach because not every tribal community is the same across the country. I know there's 574 communities across the country. Navajo is one of them, but I know that land-wise, population-wise, we're very unique. But I know that if, you, if by allowing every individual tribe to have their own unique approach, it's setting them up for success yeah. because there's things in Navajo culture that are not the same with Hopi or not the same with Laguna or different tribes across the country. So I think having that tailored approach is a good way to utilize resources. And I think that just seeing the decrease not only in, in diabetes on Navajo uh, because of, of SB, SDPI is something that's uh, related to having a tailored approach. Just again, just kind of like uh, everybody's tailored suits today. So we, we wouldn't be walking. <laughs> it's a little easier to walk around with something that's a little tailored. So again, just thank you so much to the committee, to the programs for allowing us to be successful since 1997. But obviously, the funding has also been the same since 1997. So I know there's people that need to be hired and staffed and to actually expand. And then Indian country is very rural and remote as Navajo. So again, thank you so much, Senator. Thank you, President. And that's a great point. We've had flat funding for uh, so many years in this program. And as a result of inflation over those years, we've really lost a lot of buying power. And that's something that all of us need to look at. Um, Dr. Ippolito, uh, President Nygren touched a little bit on nutrition, but I want to ask you, given that this Congress is one where, in theory at least, we're going to pass a new farm bill, and if we look back in time to when diabetes really took off, in the 1970s we kind of re, uh, we changed our agricultural policies and we focused more on commodities over horticulture, over nutrition. Um, and we saw these incredible increases from the 1970s to today in the prevalence of, of diabetes. So do you have thoughts on how we should be approaching the farm bill in light of our challenges with diabetes? Well, I guess I'll, I'll answer that by focusing on the sort of underlying point, which is that, you know, we're, we're accustomed to thinking about new pharmaceuticals, for example, as being cost effective or not. Do they deliver value for the money? But when you look at things like diabetes and other conditions, there's ample evidence to suggest that there's all sorts of other things that are cost effective if you look at them through the similar framing. Right. And so I think nutrition, um, eating habits, um, uh, sort of lifestyle changes, it seems like there's fairly strong evidence for that. And so to the extent that that's something that fits within the purview of the Farm Bill, it seems like it's something worth considering. Great. Uh, Mrs. Brown Friday, um, 
diabetes should be managed through a whole combination of prevention and treatment, and we've heard that here today. Um, for most patients, this involves first being able to be diagnosed, then treated with a combination of lifestyle changes uh, related to nutrition, physical exercise, alongside the advances in medical interventions that we've heard about. And many Americans simply don't have access to adequate health care that can prevent or delay the onset of diabetes and prevent some of the more extreme complications of the disease. How do issues with accessing health care, such as being uninsured or underinsured, having trouble affording medication, create disparities in diabetes outcomes for different populations in the United States? I think that being underinsured or uninsured uh, creates a problem for the populations across, across the United States, across the board, across ethnicities, across cultures. Um, I think that uh, when you're under or, or, um, or, or not insured, you do not have access to the health care providers or you have less access to the health care providers that can actually provide the information that you need so that you can take better care of yourself. Uh, you go and see a physician or a nurse practitioner or a diabetes educator for maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then the rest of the time you have to do it yourself. So it's, it, that, those visits are extremely um, important and valuable because during the, if you have access to health care because you're well insured, you have those visits in order to get those, those diamonds, those, those jewels that, you, that will be able to take you when you leave there to take better care of yourself, to know how to take your medications, not just to take them, but how to take them, and also to uh, choose, have better choices. Um, underinsured does not necessarily, does kind of correlate also with uh, food insecurity. Uh, frequently people who are under and in, uh, are uninsured are in areas or food deserts where uh, healthier foods are just not available, where their supermarkets are just not available or not close to them, even in, um, in both urban and rural areas. Thank you. I want to thank you all for your testimony today. Um, this is a, a, an, a topic of incredible interest to both the Vice Chairman and myself. I'm going to have to go over to a probes, and I'm going to leave it in his capable hands. But I really want to thank all of you for your, your input. And this, is, this has huge budget ramifications, but it also has huge ramifications for every individual constituent of ours.